Hi, I'm Alex Lamb, author of the Roboteer science fiction novels, and welcome back to Secrets of the Universe, um, the thrilling blog series in which I attempt to answer all of the major questions that bedevil humankind in a single video sequence. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, so what I would like to cover today is my third thrilling learning tool. Um, we've covered number one, spider reading, how you ingest uh, uh, a subject and glom it into your mind without even barely having any exerted effort whatsoever. Um, number two, agent-based modeling, the means by which we test our ideas and discover whether or not the ideas we're having or what we think we're learning actually passes muster. Um, and now number three, ladies and gentlemen, my third exciting learning tool, improv theater. Now you might say, what the hell is what the hell is the use of that? And you might even ask, well, what is improv theatre? I've never heard of it. Unlikely, perhaps, because there have been television shows like Whose Line Is It Anyway? But the idea of improv theatre is essentially... It's essentially the theatre of, of getting up on stage and making up silly shit. Um, and you sort of go up and say, can I have a name, please? Oh, a dest you know, a location somewhere in the world. And you come, come up with various novelty scenes and people attempt to collaborate on stage with the basis of, of no prior knowledge of what it is that they're going to try to do. Um, a wonderful activity. Um, what does this have to do with learning? Well, in a word, courage. Um, improv theatre is this magnificent tool via which uh, you basically slowly retrain your mind. It might not seem like that's what's happening, but, but when you have people coming into workshops and essentially uh, doing a bunch of ridiculous exercises and slowly getting more and more comfortable with those exercises on a week by week basis, what's really actually happening is that how, you, how your brain parses social risk is changing little by little. Um, and because we've done spider reading, we know that what's actually happening is that there's a part of your brain called the amygdala. Um, and the amygdala is a magic tool that uh, enables fight or flight responses. So what happens is that, let's say you're in a job interview and somebody says, hmm, so Mr. Lamb, do you understand the, the use of the squiggle pop uh, protocol? And you were like, what is squiggle pop? I've never heard of that. Ah! And then, and then there's some part of your brain. So then what happens in your, in your brain is that some part of it that says, oh, you've been confronted by information that you don't know in a situation that entails social risk. And then it sort of sends a message to the amygdala and the amygdala um, then squirts out something called cortisol and cortisol floods through your body. Um, and this particular mechanism was really sort of designed um, or, you know, evolved, if you like, to, uh, to help us um, in our natural state, um, the, one that, the one that we've sort of extrapolated out of, so confronting saber-toothed tigers and bears and the like. Um, so, so what happens, it's a little bit maladaptive for job interviews, so what, what happens is that you have um, cortisol squirted into your blood and you have this sort of like, oh, tiger type of thing. And then what happens in the rest of the interview is that uh, there's a bunch of physiological changes. You start to sweat, um, your body gets ready for you to run um, or shout or get angry or something. Um, and not in a large way, not so you notice, but that's the thing. You know, you don't really notice when you're in amygdala hijack, as they call it, um, but your, your field of vision closes in and the kind of ideas that even come to you are the ones that are going to be skewed towards either combat or running away. Um, so that doesn't make anyone particularly rational. And you know, the thing that's interesting in work and in life, we spend a surprising amount of time sort of in one form of amygdala hijack or another as we're presented with one or another sort of scary stimulus like, I don't know, watching an election or something. Um, anyway, the exciting thing about improv is that it retrains how your brain processes that stimulus so that over time you become the kind of person who doesn't really experience a lot of social fear. And that is how come those people who show up on shows like Whose Line Is It Anyway are the people who, who they seem completely okay and ready to be happy and able to just make up all kinds of crazy shit off of the cuff in front of a, in front of a television audience. That's the result of, of years of drilling, of, of, of years of mucking about. There's lots of people who are faced with the idea of improv. It's like, oh God, no, I don't want to do that. I could never do that. Well, <laughs> uh, way too, 
wait, I'm not that kind of a funny person, I can't do that. But that's, that's not what it's about. That's the opposite of what it's about. Improv is how you become that person, not what you do after you already are that person. Nobody is that person when they start off. Improv is, if you like, the, the kata. It's the, it's the martial arts skill that takes you from, uh, that takes you from being somebody who, who maybe is chronically shy and turns you into somebody who's the king at dinner parties or takes you from a, uh, a retiring sort of introverted academic to somebody who is winning awards for their public speaking, which I have personally witnessed, by the way, um, or somebody who has a chronic stutter and somebody who then is basically entirely suave for whom the stutter essentially goes away. Another thing that I've actually seen happen. Um, so this is a remarkable tool, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and what's the applicability um, in terms of science? This is the magic courage juice that enables you to go up and talk to scientists, uh, people you don't know, and learn socially about a subject. This is the magic courage juice via which you experiment with something, confront failure multiple times over, as I've actually done with these videos, because I accidentally deleted a large uh, body of the material I had and come, had to come back and record them all again. But that's, that's entirely beside the point. Um, the main idea is that, is that improv is the, is the tool via which you then have the, the ability to come back and do it again and get back onto stage, whatever stage is in a particular given context. Um, this is your this is the keys to the kingdom, ladies and gentlemen. This is the social tool that underpins everything else. The magic way that would you turn yourself into an every discipline scientist. I can heartily encourage taking a course or nine. Thank you for watching.